Welcome. My name is Kathy A and today I thought I would go off the beaten trail just a little bit and discuss something of greater interest right now than makeup. I think it's something that um, we've put on the shelf for a little bit because of the situation. Um, I'm still buying makeup, I'm still using it and I will still have demonstrations with it. But today's show I thought I would just sort of veer over into the health and wellness area since that's something that I feel is more on my mind right now and I'm sure it's on the mind of many of you. Uh, yes, we can wear masks and we can wash our hands and we can, you know, not touch anything and clean everything, but there's still that little bit of the part of us. What are we eating? What are we drinking? Now, one of the healthiest things that we can drink is tea, hot tea or iced tea regardless. And I thought I would go into some of the different types of teas, which I didn't realize there were so many different aspects to tea. And I'll tell you how it's made and what the differences are. And then I'll show you how I actually make a good cup of tea and some of my favorite gourmet teas. So let's start off with tea. Now it's a small shrub or a small tree and it is called the Camellia sinensis. Plant. and it grows tiny little leaves early in the season and they mature into larger longer leaves now, now these are picked by hand still there's not a machine that does this and they are then loaded onto long beds of bamboo and dried at a certain temperature. They're air dried at a certain temperature. Now these tea leaves are kind of oxidized by being under a heated temperature for a certain amount of time and it's quite an exact process. Um, they're kept in fermented. They ferment under these large uh, heating units and depending on how long they are fermented they will become black leaves which is black tea or a little bit less they would become green tea and so forth. Put through a processing uh, roll and crush them and it makes tiny little pieces and then there's a lot of residue left over and that is called the dust. Tea. Now the way they can divide up all of the leaves after they have been dried, fermented, oxidized, um, they are then gone through with sieves and the larger leaves are sorted out, the medium pieces are taken out and then the dust and the tiny pieces are left to process for the tea bags. So it's kind of a really neat process. Um, there are some modern equipment that does automatic blowing at a set temperature, or they will actually set them out underneath the sun in the open air to dry naturally. Now after the leaves are fermented, they are then put out to dry either under the sun or they are put in a controlled room conveyor belt and dried. If any of the parts of this is incomplete or not done correctly, a mold can grow on the tea and the whole batch will be ruined. So, so we have small pieces, we have large pieces, and we have the leaves themselves, which is kind of nice, and then the dust. So there are the different types or grades of tea, depending on how they're handled and how they're packed and what they're used for. Now the larger leaf size of these tea leaves are used in more gourmet teas and loose teas. The medium size are also used in loose teas and some of the smaller bits and the dust are used usually in tea bags. And then they are divided up until they are completely ready for packing. 
I show you um, a picture now of like all of the tree shrubs in one section of uh, India and China which grow the most tea. Now black teas are used for, um, as I said, most teas that are in the world and uh, English breakfast tea is a big one and then there are variants of the um, plant, they are hybrids that are grown in a certain area. To make Earl Grey black tea they would add oil of bergamot to the tea leaves in the processing department so they would have that kind of um, nice aftertaste to them that Earl Grey has. Now the same bush or shrub, this Camellia sinensis bush, is grown in different parts of the world and depending on where it's grown it can actually take on different attributes. So it's very similar to the grapes in France. When you take a grape in France and you grow it in California, <clears throat> it's the same grape but because of the difference in the um, landscape and the air and the soil it is a different taste and flavor, yet it is the same product. So with the same thing with uh, black tea plants, um, Assam, Darjeeling, and Nilgiri teas are all grown in India, but they use that same plant, but because they're grown on mountainous areas and different areas, there's a different flavor to them. So you're going to find, even though they all come from the same plant type, it's very different tasting depending on the region in which they were grown. Sri Lanka is where Ceylon tea is grown, again from the same plant, but it's grown in Sri Lanka. So it is, a, a Ceylon tea is a slightly lighter reddish color tea from the same plant, but that's the way it has grown. Now black tea is very common here in the U.S. and I think we know it as this kind of a tea. And these are double flow through tea bags. Now this tea is from the Camellia sinensis plant, but I'm going to open these tea bags up and pour some of this out so you can see what it looks like. It's basically like it's dust. This is the tea dust. And because it is such a fine uh, grain of tea, when you infuse this into water, it works really fast to color the water and infuse into the water. So this makes a very strong or brisk cup of tea, as they say. This is apparently America's favorite tea. And I think one of the reasons that is, is because iced tea, we like iced tea. You know, we, we love to make iced tea with, it's usually a black tea, and I actually don't mind iced tea made with this. It's nice and strong, and you can get that tea flavor. I add a little bit of lemon and sweetener to mine. But this is 80% of the tea that is drunk in America is iced tea, and it's a base of black tea usually. Um, and now some of these, this is a green tea drink, very, very popular. Again, um, this one has ginseng in it and a few other ingredients. But this is how most Americans know their teas. And once in a while, if you go to grandma's house, you know, you have one of these little cups of tea things. They're usually going to use one of the other ones, or even the herbal teas, which, you know, you would find sleepy time, or there's peppermint tea in the winter. Um, this is a really nice one. Honey, vanilla, chamomile. These are things that you would reach for probably when you had a cold, a lemon tea. And there's sleepy time to drink in, in the evening. These are herbal teas and they're a little bit different. I'm going to talk about them a little bit later. Now let's get into green tea. Green tea is from the same plant, but the difference is, is during the process of drying, it is not dried enough to ferment it. So it is actually a lighter color. And I want to just show you. This is a lighter color than the one I just showed you. You can see that that's a green tea. The healthier green teas are generally um, more of a full leaf or a whole leaf green tea. 
because they have a shorter oxidation time and they don't ferment like the black leaves do, this leaves them with more nutrients in them. And they're considered, this is considered one of the healthier of the teas, the green tea. Now the reason that some people don't like green tea is they probably put boiling water over a green tea bag and it tasted really bitter to them and they thought, ugh, I'm not gonna like this, you know, this is awful. And one of the things with, with tea leaves is we're so used to just making it easy and fast. We just throw boiling water over anything. And with green teas and white teas too, actually, um, you can't go to boiling water with them. You can with black tea. Black tea is pretty hardy and can handle boiling water, and, um, but not green tea. Green tea is a, a more delicate um, taste. And when you put just slightly below, like 160 degrees, um, and many of the new electric kettles have temperature readings on the top of them, so you can see if you're at 160 degrees, 160 to 180 degrees. If you pour that over the green tea, it will make it a lot less bitter, and often it is paired with um, lemon or other things to make it a little more palatable, but it is the healthier of the teas. So now green tea is um, probably touted as one of the healthiest teas because of all of the nutrients and antioxidants and things in it. But there is another variant of green tea and that is known as matcha. Matcha. Matcha is a powdered condensed green tea. It is like dust for green tea, only more um, extreme. And because it's so condensed and concentrated, it yields more antioxidants. It's got vitamins A, C, calcium, um, protein. A cup of matcha tea is actually equal to three or four cups of regular green tea in nutritional value. So it's a very strong, and this is another one where if you use the wrong temperature to create this tea, it really tastes gacky. It's so strong and bitter if you do it the wrong way. And matcha is becoming quite a popular thing right now, but it is a very condensed green tea powder. Moving on to oolong tea. Now oolong tea is made from the same leaves again, as the black and the green teas. However, it is processed slightly differently. It is allowed to dry and wither a little bit and then it is rolled. The leaves actually turn in on each other and it is processed in that way they get bruised and rolled and it causes a different chemical reaction in the tea so that it has a slightly different flavor. And it is not heated and hot air dried and oxidized at the same levels as green tea or black tea. It's somewhere in the middle. So it's a completely different uh, taste. And again, depending on where you grow these tea leaf uh, shrubberies in the world, you come up with a slightly different flavor. And oolong tea is really prized as one of the best teas in the world. Um, they even have competitions every year, it's kind of neat, uh, for oolong tea. And they have awards for the best tasting, the best appearance. Um, because of the way they are rolled and shrivel and dry up, they sometimes take on, and uh, they look like a dragon. So there are some that are named for a dragon, the Chinese dragon. And there are other ones that take on slightly different color variants. So That is a really kind of an interesting thing about oolong tea. Now white tea has come into popularity fairly recently and it's a fairly new tea. It's not really something that has been hundreds of thousands of years like the other teas have been. Um, white tea comes from the same plant, however, it is harvested and hand-picked way early in the season in the spring and then way early in the second growing season, which is in the fall.
they get out there and they pull on these little buds, um, tiny buds that have the leaves enclosed in them still, or if they, the leaves have just started to fan out from the seed pod. Now white tea is not fermented at all. It is allowed to dry naturally and it is kept at a certain temperature. It is slightly um, treated, oxidized slightly, but it is so light colored and it's so young. It still has this kind of silvery hair-like fiber on the outside of it uh, from it being in the pot or in the fan. So it takes on this kind of silvery note and a lot of the um, variants of this from around the world have silver and needle put in the name of it. Now this creates a very light yellow uh, tea, again very sensitive to temperature of the water um, and you have to have like 160 degrees, you have to let it steep for five minutes. It's a very very um, enjoyable and light tea. And this tea, because um, it's not oxidized or processed in the same way as green tea or black tea, it does not have the caffeine content of black tea or green tea. Getting into another kind of tea is chai. Now chai is, a lot of us are familiar with it, it's kind of this kind of cinnamony, nutmeggy thing that it's kind of like tea but it doesn't really taste like it because of all the spices and everything in it. And in India, this is tea to India. This is the way Indians make tea in their homes. They have chaiwalas which are street vendors who make the tea on the street and you give them their money and they give you a cup of tea. Now, the way this is prepared is very unique. The milk is added right away and boiled with the tea. It's boiled with a black tea. And then spices are added. And depending on the area or region, depending on the family, depending on your personal preference, you would add usually cardamom or cinnamon sticks or uh, fennel or black peppercorn. Some people add um, cloves or star anise, and this is boiled. This, this little concoction is boiled, and it is made into, it is sold on the street in a little cup, and it's called chai. And it has several variants. You can buy a box chai that is a tea bag full of powdered spices and powdered um, tea. And when you make the tea, you have to add the milk afterwards. So like a lot of other things, the process is wrong to do it that way. So it won't taste like a real true chai does to an Indian family in India. In the workplace in India, actually they have two tea breaks and they get up from their desks, they go and they have some chai and talk to people and they can you know, move around and get away from their desk. It's a social thing, just like a coffee break here in America. And it's usually a chai break and there's usually a pantry um, or small cafe in each large business office and there is somebody who does nothing but run the chai to people from the from the pantry in the office so they are called chai wallas. Now Indians um, grow a lot of the um, the tea and they actually grow my favorite which is an Assam tea which is in a Assam uh, area of India which is a mountainous area where they grow it and it's a very strong but smooth tea and I really like Assam tea but they drink 30 percent of the world's consumption of tea they are really into it I mean it's it's kind of amazing we have uh, chai lattes here in America or you can go into Starbucks and you can get some kind of chai concoction. They usually use a tea syrup concoction that has spices already in it or they have a powdered uh, cream and a powdered spice mix that they add to tea when they blend it all together and then they put whipped cream on the top of it. Um, it is kind of a sugary uh, concoction actually chai does have sweetener in it and they usually use cane sugar they usually use whole milk also it's usually done that way traditionally um, in America of course 
and being Starbucks, you can ask for it with soy milk or almond milk or oat milk or, you know, whatever. Um, there was also a version of this that had a shot of espresso added to it. So it was kind of a java chai. And people really like that flavor because you get that strength of the coffee and yet you have that subtleness of the tea and then the spices going on and for some reason it all meshed really well. So keep an eye out for something like that on the menu. Decaf tea. Now decaf tea is um, additional process. You can do it two ways. You can do it either um, by the processing doing it and you purchase it decaf or you can purchase a regular tea and do a decaf process at home. It is very easy to decaffeinate your own tea. Um, generally um, the first minute of steeping with tea into water will pull out in that first minute of um, what gets drawn and infused out of the tea bag is caffeinated. So if you pull the tea bag out and throw out that water and then put all new water with that same tea bag in, you will have extracted about 70% of the caffeine that's in the tea. So it's a good way to kind of cheat and do a little decaffeinated process with your tea. Uh, processing it beforehand, they use a carbon dioxide system, hot water infusion with the leaves themselves, uh, draw out the caffeine by kind of pre-cooking them, if you will, and then they will add the carbon dioxide to the water that the leaves are in, and then they will dry and oxidize the leaves. So it is, it's an extra process, so it is a little more expensive to buy decaffeinated tea. I would personally like to buy the whole tea and then decaffeinate it if I feel that I need to, if it's later at night or something and I don't want that extra caffeine but it's just a nice little easy way to do decaf tea. Now herbal teas, what are herbal teas? Um, you see them a lot, you know, and this is, you know, um, Celestial Seasonings is a very popular brand here in America and they, they specialize in herbal teas, like chamomile. Well, that's a flower. So herbal teas are um, generally decaf. They don't have caffeination in them. Uh, they are made from spices or plants or fruits and they are um, infused into water like tea but they're not really a tea. So they're actually called a tisane or uh, herbal tea. It's kind of a nice way to do it. So if you want to have something that's like a tea, a hot water with an infused flavoring to it, that's what an herbal tea is. And there's some really popular ones. Um, chamomile, hibiscus, peppermint, red rutabus, um, turmeric, spearmint ginger, and yerba mate. So these are very popular, uh, common herbal teas. Herbal teas are just that. They're made with herbs and spices, but they're not a tea because they are not from the Camellia sinensis plant. So, lemon or milk? Are you gonna add lemon or milk to your tea? I'll tell you, there's good things and bad things about each, but I'll start with the milk because that's kind of a short answer. No, <laughs> you shouldn't. Um, milk has um, some nutritional value. It has calcium and protein, um, amino acids, things like that. But when you add milk to tea, it grabs onto some of the properties of the tea, preventing them to absorb correctly into your system. So it actually inhibits the tea from, from acting on all the good things that are in it. So a lot of people add milk to their tea because it is so, um, it cuts down the bite taste of tea, it smooths it down, it makes it more pleasant a drink. Um, I'd suggest if you do put milk in your tea that you try to put a little less than you would normally do. Like I wouldn't put as much milk in my tea as I would in my coffee. I would never put cream in my tea either. 
but um, if you can get away with as little as possible, that would be better for you health-wise because it can actually bloat you and cause digestive issues if mixed with certain teas. So um, it's a big no, resounding no. Now with lemon, you get a flavor change in your tea, so make sure that you're ready for that and that you want that. You do get the health benefits of the vitamin C um, and the anti-inflammatory properties of this are really good. But also, this is nice to add to your tea if you have a cold or the flu. It's also good for helping you regulate your blood sugar if you are type 2 diabetic. It's also good for high blood pressure, um, helping stabilize that a little bit. And it increases collagen. It's an anti-aging properties in your skin if we want to relate it to the makeup world at all. So that's, that's good, but you can also get heartburn from this. You can also get dehydrated because it can act as a diuretic. Um, it absorbs aluminum in your system. So uh, if you have shortages in other things in your system, it can cause problems down the road. Uh, it can cause canker sores in your mouth uh, because of the way uh, the acid in the citrus fruit works. And acid reflux is the other one. It also, um, because of the flushing of your system so quickly, it can help flush out um, the iron and so it can help uh, with osteoporosis. So there are some bad things to adding this to your tea, but everything in moderation should be okay. I'm not a doctor or a nurse, I'll tell you. So how about sweeteners, <laughs> okay? Now, um, some of the, especially the herbal teas, have enough uh, fruits and spices in there where you really don't need to add too much of any kind of a sweetener, if anything at all. But it's best to taste a tea first and then see if you really need to sweeten it up a little rather than, you know, very much like if you get um, meals served in a nice restaurant and you don't even taste it, but you put all the salt and pepper all over the top of it. And then you, when you taste it, you think, oh, this is really spicy, because you added too much to the end. So the same thing with like herbal teas and anything, flavored teas, um, and even white tea. If, if you try tasting it first without any sweetener in it, then just add a little bit. Of course, um, honey is a great addition to tea, and it's often paired with tea, and it's popular. There is a slight flavor to honey that will kind of come out in the tea, and if you're not really big on that flavor, you may not like that. Now on um, the Kingdom Wellness Tea site, she sells amber sugar cubes, and these are sugar that's been created from sugar beets, and they're made in Belgium. And they are a hard square, little square of uh, sugar that sweetens naturally without altering the flavor of the sugar. This is something I wholeheartedly recommend. This is great. And I will put links to uh, that website uh, below. Um, this is blue agave syrup. You can use that. Um, this is whole earth stevia leaf and monk fruit. Uh, sometimes there's an aftertaste with this, so I'm not as fond of that. I tend to like this, which is a coconut sugar. And it's not white, it's, it's kind of a brownish shade. It's almost like a, um, it's almost like brown sugar, but it does not have a coconut taste to it. And this is like my favorite sweetener for beverages or for for sweetening oatmeal, things like that. If you can avoid it, try to avoid it <laughs> if you can. It's really not good for you. And um, while we're on the subject, the yellow packet, the pink packet, the blue packet, these are chemistry items that fool the body. I mean, the body doesn't know how to digest these at all. And they can make things so sweet um, you may think it's convenient and easy and it's not fattening, but it actually is not good for you either. These are not um, natural products and your body just doesn't know how to process them and it could be causing problems down the road. I remember the pink packet 
Sweet and Low used to have the cancer warning on it and for some reason it's not there anymore. So I don't know what's going on there, but anyway. Um, so for your sugars, I would just heartily recommend, um, like coconut sugar is great, or if you're gonna have to go with an artificial sweetener, a stevia leaf, monk fruit uh, kind of thing, or my favorite, the coconut sugar, or you can use those sugar cubes from Kingdom Wellness. And I think, I think that's just, it's worth, it's worth splurging on really good sugar because these drinks are so enhanced when you add these things to them. So tea time to me, I mean, they have Japanese tea ceremonies and they have high tea in Britain. Um, we have coffee breaks here in America and wouldn't it be nice instead of grabbing a pack of M&Ms out of the machine and drinking a Diet Coke with it, that you would have maybe a little butter cookie of some sort. These are some of my favorites. Um, the Biscoff is a spice cookie. That's really good if you have a strong black tea. Um, you have these little spice windmill cookies. Those are also really good with a, um, a dark tea, strong tea. Shortbread from Scotland. Um, Walkers. They have the Teddies, the Scotty dogs too. <laughs> Big bars, and then the um, the infamous blue tin of Danish butter cookies. Uh, those are really pleasant as well. Nothing too sweet. You really don't want anything too sweet. Um, these are my absolute favorites, and it may surprise you. These are pomeritas, and what these are a very thin, delicate vanilla sugar cookie. And it's from the Goya Company, which is a Spanish food company. It is absolutely, it melts in your mouth, light, delicate cookie. This is the perfect complement to the tea, any kind of tea. I absolutely love, these are my favorite. I mean, I can eat a whole box of them, you know. It's really, really something. This is the packaging they come in. They're not expensive at all. They are in the Spanish food section in the grocery store. And Pomeritas they're called from the Goya company. So I definitely um, recommend these for your tea time uh, sidekick. So let's make a cup of tea and we'll discuss the proper way to make a cup of tea and some little tips and tricks. So there are two ways of making a cup of tea. One is to directly put a tea bag into the tea cup itself. So I'm going to use my Calamity tea mug, which is <laughs> it's got all of the bad things in it. And if you're going to use a loose tea, this is, um, I'm going to use this one. This is an elderberry wine tea from Kingdom Wellness. I'm just going to put this much in. And I'm going to put this into one of those little See, this is a like a tea strainer. I'm just going to put that in, and I have uh, my water is heated only to 174 degrees. I'm just going to pour that over the top of this. There's a an herbal blend tea, and I'm just going to let that steep for about three minutes. What I like to do sometimes is put um, a napkin or something over the top. I'll just put my Walker's cookie, cookie thing right over the top here and let that steep for about three minutes. Now when I make a cup of tea or anything like that, I like to preheat the cup under hot water so that it's hot itself. And then I will put the tea bag in, pour the water over the tea bag, put something over the top of it, and let it steep for at least three minutes. Um, and I think that really helps a lot. To make a pot of tea, it's usually six to eight ounces of water for every spoon or spoon and a half full of tea, loose tea, or for tea bag. So I am going to use this peach passion fruit tea. It's my manglier tea. This has got the medicinal herbs in it. 
It's got fresh peaches in it. Oh my gosh, it's just lovely. Really a lovely tea. So I'm just gonna use a teaspoon measure here. I'm going to make four cups. I just want to show you this wonderful tea. And you can see the pieces of fruit in here. Pieces of fruit and spices and the uh, manglier leaves from the medicinal manglier plant. I'm actually going to throw those in there too. And now I know that this water is the correct temperature for this and I'm just going to pour this right in here and most modern day pots have a strainer inside for um, for tea so that it stops it before it goes out the spout but you can use a strainer at the other end I'm just going to pour this in here again six to eight ounces of water for every uh, tea bag or spoonful of tea. I'm just going to put that on there. I don't know if you can see the strainer in here. Just under the spout you can see that strainer there. Oh this smells marvelous. Now I'm just going to steep this and a lot of times I will put towel over the top just to keep it warm. I'm going to set my timer for four minutes. Okay, Google, set an alarm for four minutes. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about Kingdom Wellness Teas because um, talking with Karen, who is the CEO of this company, I met her on LinkedIn and this actually inspired this whole video about tea. Now, she's not sponsoring me, she's not paying me anything. Um, but I am going to mention her company because her tea is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. Uh, these are just little one ounce sample bags. The smaller bags are two ounces, which are twice the size of these. And there's quite a bit of product in even just the one ounce. So I'm just going to show you. Oh, just beautiful teas. Elderberry wine tea, because I love elderberries, as you know, elderberry extract is extremely good for your immune system. And I have elderberry extract gummies, and I have the chewables, and I have the powder you put into water, so I'm an elderberry nut. Um, and the peach passion, the Manglier uh, peach passion is an old school Native American Cajun Creole a medicinal tea that's been used for centuries and if you are from Louisiana I don't need to tell you about it if you are not from Louisiana the Manglier um, shrubs and leaves makes a very bitter tea and it's very very good if you have a cold or flu it's very very good for strengthening you and for helping you heal faster um, and they do sell extracts from it as well but this particular uh, plant is grown in Louisiana and the Kingdom Wellness Tea Company sources from one farm and it's just um, it's just such a cool thing. She has made it so palatable by adding fresh peaches and um, shreds of other spices and things so that it's a really really delicious tea and I I add a little bit of sweetness to it, but it doesn't even really need it. And of course, I don't use cream or milk with any herbal teas or flavored teas. So we're just going to wait until my alarm goes off. Mm. This is the elderberry wine tea, and it does have a slight purple purple look to it, which is kind of interesting. I'm just going to add a little bit of my coconut sugar to it. And I tell you, you know, sitting there by the fire, reading a good book, you cannot beat a really good cup of tea. I'm just going to stir this with the actual 
tea strainer. But it's tasty, it's healthy, it's infused with things that are really, really good for you. Uh, you can't go wrong with something like this. Now, Kingdom Wellness Teas was started fairly recently during So I met Karen Moore on LinkedIn and we had exchanged emails and texts, uh, messaging, and then we called each other and talked to each other on the phone. She's a really nice lady and she is so knowledgeable about health and nutrition. She graduated um, a while back from um, the Institute for um, Integrative Nutrition and so she's like a real health fitness wellness uh, fanatic really she's she's very well read and well studied she um, found out about COVID-19 coming to the US and she prepared uh, by researching uh, foods and drinks and uh, different types of medicinal products uh, fruits and vegetables and things that would be effective in helping promote a healthy body and a healthy immune system and she did this more with her mother in mind because her mom's in a high-risk group. So this business was really started because of COVID-19. Now she started by um, hand blending her own teas using locally sourced and um, also world uh, sourced supplies from the teas to the spices to the dried fresh fruits um, to the manglier. Uh, leaves to all kinds of different um, additions and botanicals and she created teas for herself really first and her mom and then her friends she started letting her friends have them when they came over and they asked for them so she started to make them for her friends and then pretty soon she had people asking for them and the word got around she actually started a business making the teas and these are small batch hand blended custom teas and you can actually make your own tea you can have her make a custom tea for you if you like certain blends in there that's a gourmet tea and this is just lovely this elderberry wine tea it's non-alcoholic it's got a nice full body flavor to it it's just a very pleasant um, you can tell the complexities in it it's got the elderberry in there there's a little bit of uh, finish to it I would add a little sweetener to it, you know me. <laughs> I add sweetener to everything. But, um, but Kingdom Wellness is, um, she's a very deeply religious person and so she's based a lot of this on her religious beliefs and she refers to it as God's pharmacy when you're working with natural ingredients um, from the earth. So I wholeheartedly um, want to promote her. I think she's she's got just a tremendous... Uh, I'm listing the website below and uh, I believe if you give in your email you can get 15% off and if that deal isn't on you can put um, Kathy A15 and you'll get 15% off your order but these are gourmet teas and they're absolutely phenomenal. They really are. Um, she has regular black teas she does have um, special fruit blend teas and she has medicinal teas. She also sells the amber sugar cubes that I talked about earlier, which I think are just wonderful. Um, she also has a tea strainer if you don't happen to have one. Uh, very inexpensive for that. And, um, you know, she hand blends all of these things. Now, her, she's very, very conscious of uh, cleanliness. Her staff wears masks and gloves when they handle the tea ingredients. Everything is hand packed per order. It is not um, taken from a shelf somewhere. It is all hand packed and made per order. So um, you can call her about making custom teas for an event like a bridal shower. You know, it could be Beth's blend or Susan's blend or it could be a wedding um, tea. So there's so many options here and I really want to support her because she also um, has founded several other groups and organizations that are very um, 
they promote wellness and well-being amongst women and she is just a real advocate of positive life and I think that this is uh, it's all good here so now when your tea is ready you can strain it out a couple of different ways if you don't have a modern teapot that has the little straining holes you can just use any of these you can get these at the Dollar Tree it's just a little mesh strainer and I'm just going to take that and I've got my little my little owl cup here a few things that got through there but you can use that you can also make your own tea bags you can buy um, blank uh, tea bags and fill your own you can also use cheesecloth you can fold up coffee filters and put either string or an elastic band around the end and make your own tea bags I'm just going to taste this This one doesn't even need the sugar in it. And this is the one with the Manglier uh, leaves in it. So this is the medicinal one. Now, um, this is an interesting question. Like, after I poured out a cup, per se, can I keep pouring water in? How many times can I do that? So I would say that there's a couple more cups in here. Once I poured out the cups in here, you can refill with water to the same leaves up to three times. I would just let it steep slightly longer, maybe a minute longer, and you will get that same full flavor. But this is a lovely tea. For a medicinal tea, you wouldn't even know it. I mean, this is just a beautiful, lovely tea. You can sit here and read a book or something to it. So, Now also, if you want to make a pot of iced tea, so you can, you know, take tea uh, on the road with you, or you know you can fill it this is my my donut dip those of you in Massachusetts know the donut dip um, make a nice iced tea or you can put this in the refrigerator at work so that you can have a nice iced tea you would just let this sit until it cooled and then you can pour it over ice for that add a little bit of lemon um, to that maybe a little bit of coconut sugar or something like that and you've got a beautiful iced tea to take and you can use any of the teas for that now, um, besides drinking tea, it has a lot of other uses. I was really surprised. I'm just gonna read you some of the other uses for tea. <laughs> you can stain fabric, of course, tea staining fabric. Um, dark tea can give a vintage look to fabric or paper, too. You can actually stain paper to look more like, you know, calligraphy paper kind of thing. You can make potpourri out of tea leaves. Um, you can mix loose tea into kitty litter and it helps absorb the smell. Uh, you can soak your dirty pans in tea overnight and it will loosen up. The tannins in the tea will loosen up the junk on the pan. It'll be easier to clean in the morning. Um, you can um, restain and refresh hardwood floors. It makes them very shiny and it fills in if you have like a ding or a dent in your wooden floors, it'll cover over it and make it look like, you know, it won't be so noticeable. Uh, you can deodorize um, with tea bags. They absorb in the refrigerator. You can put some tea bags in there and they will pull the smells out. Um, if you get bitten by an insect or a mosquito, put a, a damp tea bag on the bite and it will draw out the toxins from the bite. Uh, you can use tea mixed with some water and spray it on windows and use it as a window cleaner. It works quite well. You can mulch it into your soil and you can use it in baking too. You can make things with it. Um, as As a face mask, you can add it to honey or Greek yogurt. You can also mix it with your cleanser to make an exfoliating cleanser. Um, it's also a dark circle remover. A lot of us know you take the tea bags and stick them on your eyes and they help reduce the puffiness and the darkness um, on your face. Um, it can be used as a hair rinse and also you can freshen your hair color with darker tea. You can put the tea on your hair, let it sit for a half an hour or so, and then rinse it out, and it will refresh your color a little bit. 
it will only last for the day but it will refresh your color a little bit so um, I hope you found this kind of helpful about tea I certainly enjoyed researching all this stuff and um, I have a deeper appreciation for tea now than I ever have and I'm so happy to have run across Kingdom Teas um, there is a quote here from William Gladstone if you are cold tea will warm you if you are hot tea will cool you if you are depressed tea will cheer you and if you are excited tea will calm you so on that I hope all of you are having a wonderful week and have a beautiful day take care toodles <laughs>